many early attempts to capture audio and transduce it into physical form. One of the earliest attempts was to capture an image of a waveform on smoked paper called a phonautogram. The only problem was there was no way to play it back. This led to other inventors figuring out more accurate ways to transduce the vibrations of air molecules into another form. Edison's gramophone used wax cylinders and a simple diaphragm to etch sound vibrations onto wax. Later, with the development of electromagnetic transducers, many inventors began improving and outdoing each other. Alexander Graham Bell and Elijah Gray both utilized this technology for telephonic transmissions. Americo Marconi used the same technology in correlation with Nikola Tesla's research to produce commercial wireless communication. Then came the Germans. This is where the story gets a little bizarre. The Nazis were the first to record these electrical communications. Spurred on by the Ministry of Propaganda, German manufacturers began producing magnetic tape for the purposes of rebroadcasting state propaganda. This allowed their message to be spread and reproduced everywhere they went. Later, with the advent of synthetic magnetic tape, their messages were broadcast with the ease of portable recording and playback devices. After the war, many of these tape machines ended up in the hands of the Allies. One of those machines ended up in California in the hands of Bing Crosby. Always looking for a way to capture his stage performances, Crosby gave the tape machine to his friend, Les Paul. Les Paul, the inventor of the solid body electric guitar, built the first multi-track mixer to interface with the multi-track magnetic tape machine. Recording himself and his wife in their home, he developed the first overdub process for audio production. This is the cornerstone of all music production ever since. Before those days, one mic would have to pick up the entire room, and the musicians would have to position themselves around the mic to get a balanced recording. With the advent of multi-track recording and mixing, sonic quality would forever be improved. Enter the physicist. Tommy Dowd enters this story from another bizarre left field. Physicist Dowd worked on the Manhattan Project, which developed the atomic bomb at the end of World War II. After returning home, he was unable to teach any of the groundbreaking physics that he had developed. He was relegated to teaching 19th century physics in a 20th century world. He decided it was time for a change and moved to New York to become the first engineer for Atlantic Records. He produced some of the greatest records of all time, including Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Little Richard, Charles Mingus, John Coltrane, Otis Redding, The Drifters, The Allman Brothers, Willie Nelson, Eric Clapton, Cream, Leonard Skinner, The Bee Gees, and even A Tribe Called Quest. He took the mixing consoles based on Les Paul's design and revamped them into the modern powerhouses of analog processing that we know today. For example, the sliding fader was one of his improvements. Now an engineer can play the mixer like an instrument itself, which is particularly useful in live radio and live studio recordings. Nowadays, that simple idea is paramount to digital automation in mixing. So as you can see, audio engineering has had a crazy history. Ultimately, we use the weapons of war as the tools for social revolution. Or as Fela Kute put it, music is the weapon. As always, thank you for watching. This has been presented by vstand.org. If you want to watch any more videos, click the videos above. Hit me up on the social medias. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.